Now, uh, this is true. This right here is true if we define the inductance like this. If you simply define the inductance for any circuit, there's our definition symbol, as the magnetic flux you get through the loop per unit of current. And I'm going to now prove to you uh, that if you define L like this, then you will will show right now that the EMF, the back EMF, is negative L times di dt. First of all, what's this thing right here? What's this? Faraday's that is just Faraday's law. Uh, that is just the negative rate of change of B dotted on A. We're assuming a uniform field, B. Those are parallel, so we can get rid of the dot product. That gives me, bring the A out, that doesn't matter. D, D, T of mu naught N, I. Where did I get that mu naught N, I? What's that? That is the magnetic field inside of a coil. What's the magnetic field outside of a long coil? Zero. For when I say long, you got to read that as infinite. It's zero outside of an infinite coil. So uh, again, I can bring out everything that's not changing. Uh, mu is a constant. Mu uh, mu naught is the uh, permeability of free space. It's exactly four pi times ten to the negative seven Tesla meters per ampere. Uh, and uh, the n is the number of turns per unit length. A is the area. What would the area be for a coil of radius r? Pi r squared. How come I don't have to worry about any areas outside of my coil? There's no magnetic flux outside of our coil. Field is magnetic field is zero, so uh, this is going to end up being the area of my coil or the area of the circuit. And then all I've got left is just the rate of change of i. That is the only thing that could change. Uh, and here's the trick here. I put i over i here, so this will work out. You'll see why I did that momentarily. I just introduced i over i is just one, right? I introduced that so we can express it the way that we want to here. But what this allows me to do by introducing that I over I, what is uni times A? It's the magnetic flux. This term on top is the magnetic flux. So it's just phi B over I, that's why I introduced that I over I, times negative di dt. And because we have defined L as this, that gives us our back EMF is this inductance, which is the magnetic flux per amp times the rate of change of current. To clarify, this is our definition of inductance, but this, by using this definition, we get the back EMF is negative, just, just like that negative is from Faraday's law, it's negative L di dt. The rate of change of current is way easier to measure than the magnetic flux and the rate of change of that.